Hi, here I am Dr. Zell and the topic is Introduction to Malignant Bone Tumors. Before discussing the types of malignant bone tumors, we must know the differences in between benign versus malignant bone tumors. That benign bone tumors having the well-defined and narrowed zone of transition while the malignant bone tumors have ill-defined borders and wide zone of transition. Benign bone tumors not having soft tissue mosses while the malignant bone tumors having soft tissue mosses. Benign tumors having solid peristal reaction while the malignant bone tumors present with interrupted periosteal reaction. Benign bone tumors having geographic bone pattern while malignant bone tumors have moth eaten or permeated bone destruction. There are many malignant bone tumors but I will discuss the most common and well-known malignant bone tumors such as osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, chondrosarcoma, multiple myeloma, fibroma, edmentinomas, and lymphomas. It's amazing to tell that all these malignant bone tumors have male peridilation. Further, they are commoner after 40 years of age. And majority of malignant bone tumors usually affect the lower femur and upper tibia. Now I will discuss osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma, these are the second most common primary bone tumors after the multiple myeloma. Accounting for 20% of all the primary bone tumors and they are the most radio resistant. Osteosarcoma leading to osteoid formation that is like a bone but devoid of mineralization. Histologically, the conventional osteosarcoma is the most common. Osteosarcoma is of two forms, the primary osteosarcoma and the secondary osteosarcoma. Primary osteosarcoma usually occurs in ages between 10 to 20 years because the growth centers are active in this age group whereas the secondary occurs in elderly, yearly secondary to malignant degeneration of the Paget's disease or due to extensive bone infarct or due to post radiotherapy for the conditions like as osteochondroma and osteoblastoma. Primary osteosarcoma yearly involves the metaphysis of lung bones and such as a femur 40%, especially the distal femur and involving the tibia 16%, especially the proximal tibia and 15% involves the humerus. While the secondary form of osteosarcoma yearly occurs in wider distribution in flat bones, especially the pelvic bone, uh, that's already a favorite site for the Paget's disease. The diagnosis of osteosarcoma is based on the pathological features and the radiological features. The diagnosis on pathological features, we will see there is proliferation that is uncontrolled pleomorphic spindle osteoblast formation that's resulting in a stride matrix. 
The diagnosis of osteosarcoma on radiographic features such as on plain radiography, we would see sometimes the aggressive nature such as the various reactions in the form of sunburst sign and quadrant triangle. Sunburst sign, there's actually due to lien grows too fast so that the periosteum does not have enough time to form new layers and you will see the sharpie phases these sharpie fibers stretches out perpendicular to the bone where the cordment triangle shows the periosteal radiation where you would see that the periosteum does not have the time to ossify with shells of newborn. On plain radiograph you can see the soft tissue masses where on MRI you can see the local staging and extension where on the bone scanning and PET scanning you can see the extensile location and staging for the osteosarcoma. So in this radiograph you can see the distal half of femur is occupied and expanded with heterogeneous masses with areas of bone formation and you can see the posterior periosteum is elevated. That is the Cordman triangle sign. In this radiograph you can see ill-defined sclerotic area and aggressive sunburst type of periosteal radiation with significant swelling of adjacent soft tissues. In these radiographs you can see ill-defined sclerotic area affecting metaphysis of distal fibula with aggressive periosteal reaction that is sunburst sign and with soft tissue swelling. Now I will discuss about Ewing sarcoma. Ewing sarcoma these are the second most common malignant primary bone tumors in children after osteosarcoma. They occur in between 4 to 25 years and these tumors are the most radiosensitive. Typically, these tumors arising from medullary cavity and causing the invasion of haversian system. There is a hallmark sign that is onion skin periostitis that is also called lamellar sign. And this Ewing sarcoma is commoner in white population. Ewing sarcomas they are mostly frequently located in the lung bones and pelvis. They are accounting for 45% in the lower limbs and 20% for presence in pelvis and 13% in spine and ribs. Diagnosis for Ewing sarcoma is through pathological features and radiological features. On pathological features we would see the pleomorphic small round blue cell tumor which leading to permeative growth pattern. Where is the diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma? on radiographic features such as on plain radiography we would see that may show aggressive appearances such as sunburst sign and cordman triangle however 76 percent they are permeative and may show the hallmark sign that is called the lamellated onion skin periosteal radiation that is accounting 57% percent 
and 40% shows the sclerosis. They show the white zone of transition and may demonstrate extension into adjacent soft tissues. In this radiograph you can see there is a mid-diaphysal humeral lien which has a permeative appearance of the lien that the tumor is moving through the bone but without destroying the all the trabecula and showing the lamellated periosteal reaction. In this radiograph you can see ill-defined licency in the distal femur with wide zone of transition and on in skin periosteal reaction. Now I will discuss the chondrosarcomas. The chondrosarcomas, these are the malignant cartilaginous tumors that accounts for 25% of all the primary malignant bone tumors. Most commonly these are found in all patients such as between 40 to 50 years and these tumors usually occur within the long bones. Chondrosarcoma occurs at various locations mostly they are 45% occurring in long bones the reason is that the cartilage is more abundant in the lung tubular bones and 20 to 35% occurring in the femur and 25% occurring in the pelvis and also occurring in the proximal humerus. Chondrosarcomas can be diagnosed through pathological features and radiological features. On pathological features, we will see multilobulated due to halen cartilage nodules with central high water content and peripheral endochondrial ossification, resulting into rings and ores calcification, also called the popcorn calcification. Chondrosarcoma are divided into three to four grades based on cellularity. Subtypes are primary that is arising de novo and the secondary arises from pre-existing cartilaginous moss. The diagnosis of chondrosarcoma on plant radiography we can see that counting 50% light clients and you can notice the intralaginal calcification that is 70% in the form of rings and ox calcifications also called the popcorn calcification and there is other sign that is endo is still scalloping and moth eaten appearance in this radiograph you can see and Intramedullary lion is noted and endo is still scalloping and chondral calcification. Now I will discuss multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is also called plasma cell myeloma. It is the second most common primary malignant bone tumor in adults that is between 50 to 70 years and really affecting the black population. It arises from red marrow due to monoclonal proliferation of plasma cells. The location distribution of multiple myeloma that mirrors of the red marrow in older individuals and thus mostly encountered in the axial skeleton and proximal appendicular skeleton such as involving the vertebra, ribs, skull, shoulder gilded and the long bones. Multiple myeloma can be diagnosed 
by the pathological features and by the radiological features on the basis of pathological features we would see the clonal bone marrow plasma cells if or is 10% or the more than then 10% that is conclusive of multiple myeloma on radiological features we would see the punched out lesions these are the lytic lesions that are 70% of the cases and we will see the generalized osteopenia and endosteal scallopings actually the endosteal scalloping is when abetting the cortex and causing the resorption of the inner layer of the cortex multiple myeloma may present with solitary expansile lesions in this radiograph you can see the lateral view of a skull showing the punched out lytic lesions that are also called the raindrop appearance in this radiograph you can see multiple foci of endosteel scalloping that are the erosions of uh, the inner cortex within this long bone now i would discuss the fibrosarcoma fibrosarcoma these are the malignant bone tumor of fibroblast origin unfortunately to tell these tumors are uncurable these are rare malignant tumors which may occur as primary lesion or secondly after the radiation yearly affecting in the ages between 30 to 60 years and there is a infantile fibrosarcoma is also rarely encountered fibrosarcoma usually located in the metaphyses of lung bones such as tibia fibula and humerus the diagnosis of uh, fibrosarcoma can be done on the basis of uh, the pathological features and the radiological features the diagnosis of fibrosarcoma on the pathological features that the pleomorphic cells they are arranged in a zigzag way such as like as the bones of herring fish the diagnosis of fibrosarcoma on plan radiography can be made that there is a typically they are highly destructive with white zone of transition and occasionally they are expansile these tumors are often associated with a large soft tissue masses extending from the bone in this radiograph you can see the metaphyseal lesion that is lytic in appearance and with fibrous matrix and with a white zone of transition and with cortical destruction and faint periosteal reaction now i would discuss adenomas these adenomas are rare primary malignant bone tumors vast majority occurs in young patients they are locally aggressive adenomas they are excessively confined to the tibial diaphysis especially the anterior cortex the diagnosis of adenomas on plan radiography we can see the well defined and elongated osteolytic defects sclerotic bone and so bubble appearance in this radiograph you can see multilocular slightly expansile osteolytic cortical lesions and lesions tend to be these are eccentric epicenter and lack of 
pay us the reaction. And really these are locally aggressive and shows the anterior crest of the tibia with a so bubble osteolytic appearance. Now I would discuss lymphomas. The lymphomas are rare malignant tumors that are counting for less than 5% of the bone tumors. Presence of lymphoma is isolated to one bone and the peak incidence is 50 to 60 years. Lymphoma usually occurs in the pelvis and femur and usually occurs in the region of persistent red marrow. Diagnosis of lymphoma can be performed on plant radiography and may show no specific features. However, may show lytic, sclerotic or mixed type of lesions with wide zone of transition and permeated type of bone destruction. In this radiograph you can see the permeated type of uh, lien with lytic lien with moth eaten lesions. You can see reactor sclerosis and slight periosteal reaction. Please subscribe my channel for more videos and updates. Audio.